Hello ladies and gentlemen, cats and dogs. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to create two unique glass displacement materials by only using the built-in textures in Blender, and we'll achieve some other cool looking results along the way. Very simple tutorial, so let's get started. Before we get started, if you want to know what glass material I'm using, it is this node setup right over here. If you want, you can pause the video and copy the nodes and values down. But other than that, let's get to the tutorial. Go ahead and click the add button on the bottom or press shift A on your keyboard and search for the Veroni texture node. Let's now make a copy of that node by pressing shift D on your keyboard to duplicate it. Let's change the node's coloring mode from intensity to cells on both of them. That's pretty much it, so now let's just connect the first Veroni texture's color output into the second Veroni's texture scale input, then the texture's output into the material's displacement input. And if we take a look at it, we've already gotten a few nice cracks on the glass. If we increase the Veroni scale value, we can actually get an even more interesting result. Though this does look nice, it isn't the result that we are looking for. So. Let's increase the displacement realism and number of cracks by changing the second Veroni's coloring mode from cells to intensity. And we've already gotten a big change, nice cracks, however we want it to look like these cracks, to give it that stained glass look that you see on antiques or windows. So let's add in a math node and place it after the second Veroni texture node. Once you've done that, change the math node's operation from add to multiply because we want to multiply the Veroni's color by the bottom value because the color and shade of the glass is really what changes due to the new height values. I find 10 a good value for this and I think this is a really good looking displacement for stained glass or whatever you want it for. I mean, this tutorial is based off my cracked surface video anyways. Now for the second displacement setup, go ahead and add in a noise texture node, but we're going to edit its color, so let's view it with a diffuse shader node. Plug in the noise texture into the diffuse shader and the diffuse shader into the material surface input so we can take a look at the texture's colors. As you can obviously see, the noise texture has a lot of colors to it, which is bad for height maps or bump maps or displacements in general. Now to use this as a displacement, we need to convert it to black and white with a color ramp node. As you can see, the noise texture has now went from RGB to black and white values. On the color ramp node, it changed the interpolation from linear to constant. This stops the blend of colors and keeps each RGB and BW into the solid box colors. If we drag the right letter that's white to the left, we can affect the values of the black and the white on the noise texture. I'll just set mine to around the middle, and you guys can play around with yours to see what works best. Let's up the scale to around 13.3 for more black spots, and we'll increase the detail to 3. Now if we change the material back to the glass material and connect the color ramp node to the material's displacement input, we're now able to view the cracks of the glass with the real material. However, we're not done yet because we're going to add in more details to it. And we'll do this by adding in a wave texture node. After you've put that in, we'll change the wave type from bands to rings and the wave profile from sine to saw. If we plug the wave texture into the diffuse shader, we can see the pattern that it generates. Those rings will act as additional displacement data, but we don't want them uniform at all. So let's destroy the wave texture by increasing the distortion value to any good number you think will work best. You can play around with it. For me, I'll just put mine to around 50 to 60, which is already a good amount. Now let's see what it looks like as a displacement by switching back to the glass material and plugging the diffuse shader into the material's displacement input. You can see the effect that it has on the sphere. However, don't worry about these black empty areas on the sphere because we'll fix that when combining both the texture displacements. Since we're done with the textures, we can remove the diffuse shader by clicking on it and pressing X to delete it. We'll add in our final node to combine the textures and that's with the Mix RGB node. Once added in, we'll plug in the color ramp node into the Mix RGB's top color input and the wave texture node into the Mix RGB's bottom color input. Finally, we'll change the blend type from mix to multiply, and we'll change the factor value from any number in between 0.1 to 0.2. Take a look, and we've done it! We've created another type of stained glass, 
So when making these node setups, I tried going for displacements that would resemble stained glass. And I thought these two results were the best ones out of all my attempts. However, if anything, my favorite is actually the first result. But there you go. Two unique displacement for glass for you guys to use or to fiddle around with. Alright, thanks for watching. If you found this tutorial helpful in any way or just found it interesting, leave a like on the video to show your support, share this video on social media, and comment below your feedback and thoughts. In the future, I'll make a tutorial on creating the different colors for the stained glass. Thanks for watching and follow me on Instagram. Bye.